What's up Simonics and welcome to a very specific Angular tutorial today. I want to show you along different steps how you can create an Angular landing page which is connected to an Airtable database so you can store uh, the emails of users who sign up to your pre-launch list or anything like this in a secure way. Because the problem is when you have an Angular front-end application you don't want to expose any API keys. You don't want to have key to convert kit, MailChimp, Airtable or anything in your Angular application. And to fix this, we will bring in Netlify, because with Netlify, we can not only host our Angular application, we can also use Netlify Cloud functions in a super simple way. We're gonna begin by setting up our Angular application and create the Airtable database. Then we're gonna inject or add the Netlify Cloud function, which will also access our Airtable key from the process environment. We're gonna create a GitHub repository, which is connected to Netlify, so we can on push build our application on Netlify and host it there and finally also bring in Tailwind UI and some meta tags to make this a really great outstanding landing page. You can pretty much copy the whole scheme that we used in this and just add all the other informations to that page and there you go that's your landing page for your next side project. So you can find the code linked below this video and of course make sure you like the video and hit the subscribe button so you get notified about all the upcoming videos in the future. But now let's implement this super cool Angular landing page component. Alright, let's begin our project by setting up the Angular application. Now, if you haven't done this before, you need to install both the Angular CLI and for later use it the Netlify CLI as well. Um, once you got this, you can generate a new project calling ng new with a name for your project. I'm just going to call this pre-launch page. I want to include a uh, routing file and use uh, SCSS, but that's totally optional. Uh, but for the routing, I think you should do this as well. Once you've done this, uh, you can dive into the project and generate a new component. So this is the short form for generate component which will generate a new landing component in your app folder right here. Additionally, we need two packages. We need the Airtable package and we need the Netlify functions package. So go ahead and install these as well right in the beginning. So then we got everything in place. Now, what you need as well is of course an Airtable table. <laughs> so go to Airtable, create an account, it's free. And then you can just create a new table. I would just remove everything um, where can you do like new, uh, yeah, there's the plus at a base. Um, you're going to give it a name. You can call just restart from scratch and then remove everything. So let's do this. I feel like I'm in the wrong environment here. Yeah. I'm in the Ionic Academy, uh, share it with me. Well, let's go ahead with this one. Um, I'm going to remove basically everything. I'm just going to call this one email and I'm going to remove these so can i just uh i can somehow yeah i can delete this field delete this field delete this field then i got only email in here and i will just call this one my uh pre-launch pre-launch uh table whatever the name doesn't really matter we can use it from here because this is the app the base name and then we got the table name that's all we need actually um well, probably not everything because we also need the API key, which you can find in your account. So you can just click on your uh, little icon here, go to account, and then it will show your API key. Now we could do this in a pretty easy way by just having everything inside our Angular application. The problem is you really don't want to expose this key to the world. Now if I spoil out this key along the video, which I likely do, uh, I'm just going to uh, regenerate it later. Um, just for your information. Um, but in your case, you really don't want to have it uh, stuff like that in a front end application. So that's the whole idea of this uh, tutorial to basically hide this key in a server like environment. And we're going to do this with the Netlify function. But before we get to that, let's start with the basics and implement our landing page. First of all, let's go to our app module and inject the HTTP client module. This is necessary if we want to make any kind of API calls uh, later in our application, which we will certainly do um, to our hosted cloud function. Um, Angular common slash HTTP. There we go. And then just put that into the imports. 
Uh, what do we got as well? We got the app component. Um, we also want to create a reactive form. So for this, we should inject the reactive forms module from Angular Forms. It's just a different kind of uh, setup for your form component. Because we initially enabled routing, we also got this routing file. So let's just set up one route or maybe let's say check out the application even before that. So let's run ng-serve minus O. This will um, serve your application with live reload and immediately open the browser. Um, but we can already type ahead in here because what we want to do is can we do this? No, that's actually the wrong, this one's the right one. So this is the default Angular application you get with a project, but we actually don't want anything of that. So we're gonna remove basically everything from our app component, which currently holds a bunch of styling stuff. And the only thing we wanna keep is actually here at the bottom. So we only wanna have the router outlet. So I'm gonna remove everything else and just put in the router outlet. That means within our app component, uh, Angular will try to resolve the route path and we're gonna set up for the blank path, a component, which is the landing component that we just generated. And now we can already see our landing page works. That's a great start. Uh, and that's everything for the basics. So we can already close the app module, we can close the app routing, uh, we can close this one and head over to our component, which is the landing page. We're gonna need the TypeScript file, not the testing file today. Uh, we can talk about that sometime else. Uh, we need the landing component and the HTML file. And we're gonna create our reactive form by defining a form group. Um, it will be red because the property form has no initializer and is not defined in the constructor, so let's do this. We're gonna also uh, inject the form builder. So this will make life easier when we create our reactive form now. And we can just, yeah, probably don't remove all the brackets. That would be a smart move. Don't do it like I do. Uh, run this dot form builder group. And for the group, we will only capture the email today. We're gonna set it by default to an empty string and we're gonna include some validators. Uh, so those are from Angular Forms as well. We're gonna use the required and we're gonna use validators email. So now the form will be fine and if I don't mess up all the brackets, it will actually look quite good. Additionally, we need the HTTP client here. Uh, we don't know exactly yet what we're gonna make an HTTP call. Uh, but we'll certainly do this in the future. Uh, if we want to, you can also remove the on init. We don't need it today. The only thing we might want to have is an additional submit function in which we will just print out the value of our form for now. So with that in place, we can head over to our landing page and create the UI. So since we will in the end make this a beautiful landing page using Tailwind, uh, we will do it super easy. We will really just use like the bare minimum of code. We're gonna connect it to our reactive form and on submit, we wanna trigger our submit function. So that's all. Uh, then we just need one input field. Uh, we can make it a type email. Yeah, that's really important, Simon. Uh, most importantly is form control name. So this connects the field to the property of our reactive form right here. So we're gonna do it like this. Uh, we can use a placeholder or we can save even that and add a button with type submit, which will trigger our submit action. Really, that's all we need for this simple form. So let's try this. Submit, email, whatever. Okay, that's a good start. Um, it, of course, looks horrible at this point, but we can continue and create our cloud function because at this point, in our code, we want to hand over to the cloud function. We want to tell the cloud function, here's the email. You could also include a name or other information and then tell it, please insert that data to Airtable. That is our idea. And to achieve this, we will first of all create a new folder and we call it Netlify. Additionally, we're going to, oops, no, we don't want to do that. <laughs> we want to create another folder called functions. So we could do whatever we want to in the end uh, and tell Netlify exactly where our function is, uh, but usually this is the setup. So then go ahead and create a function uh, file sign up or name it whatever you prefer. And then we're gonna create a handler. 
we're gonna do it just like this. Okay, we're gonna need some imports for that. So let's do this from Netlify functions. We wanna add this one and finally we're gonna make sure that we can export our handler. Do I have a bracket, too many brackets? Um, mm, 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 mm. So what if I return something, will this turn it? No, it's still red. Um, yeah, you usually need to return status code, whatever, uh, plus a body test. Let's just do it like this. Okay, cool. That turns the function already green. Now, how can we test these things within our application? There is actually the Netlify CLI, which is pretty cool. But in order to use the Netlify uh, CLI, uh, we should set up a new file that's called netlify.toml. Uh, within this file, you can specify general hosting information uh, for Netlify. And we're just gonna put in information about the build of our project and some redirects. So for every Angular application, if you host an Angular application with Netlify or at Marcel or any other of these services, you usually need to redirect to the index HTML as the path are otherwise not defined. So if you're trying to access something like app, uh, my dashboard or something like this, usually the application isn't possible to resolve this as this is no static URL or path defined in the server. Instead, in Angular single page applications, you only have index and the index loads your Angular application and then uh, the router takes over and manages, okay, uh, we need to look up app and we look to need to look up dashboard and then the router will handle this. So therefore we need a redirect. For the build, um, we're gonna specify the published directory, which is what you can find if you run ng build. Um, if you run ng build, it will usually create a folder dist slash the name of your project. So since I named mine pre-launch page, the published folder will be dist pre-launch page and the build command is just ng build. This will since Angular, I don't know, 13, uh, automatically run the production build uh, of our code. So here we go, dist pre-launch page. That's what we wanna um, host in the end. And for the functions, we're gonna specify the Netlify functions directory that we just created. Now, why do we create this Netlify toml in the first place? So we can now run Netlify dev, which will use this file, the information of this file, to host our local application, which is pretty cool. And also we have now a signup function already running at localhost whatever dot netlify functions sign up. So if I would go into a browser uh, and try to get this, I would actually get back the test message that we defined in here because we define uh, status code 200 and return of test, which is I think pretty cool. And in reality in the end, this is also the same URL that will be used for our cloud function. So that means we can pretty much use uh, the origin or the, the base URL of our project and then append .netlify slash functions slash sign up. And I think we should actually do this right now. So let's head over to our submit function in the landing component. And let's check this out. Let's get a bit more space in here. And instead of doing this lock, we're now gonna get, first of all, the base URL of our project, which is simply <laughs> window location dot origin. It's fine in these cases. Um, it might get more complicated if you have specific routing or subfolder. So in that case, check out your base URL. But if you have a pre-launch landing page, it's usually just uh, at the root level. So that should work for you. And I need some coffee. Oh, oh it's, almost, uh, it's almost warm. Anyway, uh, we're not gonna do an HTTP call and we wanna do a post to our endpoint. Now our endpoint is first of all the base URL and then slash what we've already seen here. So slash dot Netlify, whatever, there we go. And if you get a problem right here, um, no, the problem in this case is that I haven't specified a body. Um, you should use the template literals because if you're using them like this, it will just uh, use this as a string. But if you use the string literals like this, it will uh, resolve this to the actual value of the variable. So that's highly important. Otherwise, it doesn't really make any sense. Now, 
Uh, for the body of our call, we're just gonna use um, the value. Ooh. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, what did I do? Sorry, that was completely the wrong key. <laughs> what we wanna do is we wanna get the value of our form. We can use get value, get raw value, value, doesn't really matter too much. And then we're gonna do a subscription here. Um, so I'm just gonna put everything using the new syntax in here. Uh, so next means we got some result. Um, and we're gonna specify error as well. Any, and then we're gonna do something else. So in our case, let's just for now put in a lock here for the result. And then we're gonna just alert uh, the message and for the error we also just gonna alert it out so normally of course you would do something more sophisticated but we're fine with that so let's give this a try if I submit this uh, it says cannot post whatever um, that's cool um, but actually it should yeah we are on the wrong ah that's interesting so the Netlify function was automatically hosted on port 8888 uh, Angular is usually using uh, 420 uh, so let's change this. This is actually what Netlify is hosting. And if I now call submit, I get back email or submit this and I get back an error um, simply because the cloud function uh, shouldn't really work at this point. Let's do give this a try. Here I am. Let's hit save. And then we're going to try it another time. And then we actually see the log. So this is what I found really, really interesting about the uh, CLI right here. Um, we can execute it locally without hosting the actual uh, function. Um, response with status. I actually don't know why we are right now getting an error right here. Uh, submit this. I feel like, yeah, this page doesn't really come with live reload, does it? So it only locks submit this, but it can't really lock anything in here. Uh, or can it? Can I do this? Like it doesn't feel like it's reloading. Oh, it actually does. So we got a little problem here. What's the actual problem? Uh, unexpected token T in JSON at position parse. Yeah, that's cool. Um, our signup function doesn't really return anything, uh, any valid JSON. So we're gonna fix this. Never mind. But we've seen we're able to uh, use the cloud function already from our code. So now let's write the actual uh, cloud function because that's really the most important part to connect this to Airtable. So first of all, we can import Airtable from Airtable and this will usually throw up an error because we haven't used allow authentic default imports, but that's no problem. Just hit over to your tsconfig and append it right in here. Uh, probably don't add an one in there to make it invalid. <laughs> Just use it like this. And at some point, Oh, that was quite, quite fast. Um, yeah, the page in TypeScript picks it up. Now, what we need for Airtable to actually uh, make a connection is an API key. And we can grab this API key now directly from the process environment. Locally, we usually don't have this uh, key right now, but we're gonna see how we can add it to Netlify in a second. But once we get that key, we can actually create a new connection to Airtable using the Airtable package, our API key, and then the base. And now let's check out our application and bring in the string right here. So we could also specify this in the environment, but I don't really think that this is something we need to hide at this point. Okay, uh, let's just now write a new cloud function and try to uh, run everything if we get any kind of issue, uh, we will just return an error 500. That should be fine. So the body that we get back here um, is basically just a string. So we should call JSON parse on the body. If we don't have a body, I will just use an empty string. I don't know if this will, I think this will automatically crash. So, well, let's do, let's save this. <laughs> let's save this and send this out uh, without any information. So at this point, yeah, API key is required to connect to Airtable. That's also cool. Um, that's a good error because we don't have the API key right here in the process environment. We can define it later. We don't have it right now. So I'm going to do a little hack for development. Just make sure you don't do this uh, in production. So I'm going to copy over my key 
and just put it in here instead. So that will make sure that we actually have a connection. Um, so if I now do the post, uh, we have a different error. We have lambda response was undefined. Check your function code. That is cool. Uh, that's at least something else. Um, most likely because something in the function went wrong. Okay, now let's finish our function. Um, if we get the data, we're just gonna check if we, um, yeah, we don't want to check for name. We'll only check that we uh, got the email. So please include email. And once we get this, we can make a call to the Airtable API. We're gonna call base and then define the actual table name. So bring up your Airtable. This time we're not using this part with app. This time we're using the second part, which also starts basically with table in the beginning. And in that table, we wanna create a new row. Um, so records data, and we only want one record, email data dot email. Um, this is actually a promise as far as I know, exactly. So let's call await before we return the data to our client. Uh, but at this point, unless we have any kind of error thrown, uh, we're fine and we can return 200. Now, I think the problem was that we previously haven't called JSON stringify on our body, but we haven't also here. So mm, we're gonna see, let's do a few tests now uh, for our code and check it out. So here we go. Uh, let's submit without an email. Uh, okay, error, please include email. That's cool. Uh, we see it. It's right here. That's cool. Okay, let's do something else. Let's submit this. And we actually get, oh, that was unexpected. <laughs> so that means I should be able to see our data in here. Mm, we've already done it. Pretty cool. How long did it take? 20 minutes, just 20 minutes to uh, build this powerful input and connect it to Airtable. That's quite cool, quite cool. <laughs> I didn't expect this really. I thought we, we would have hit any uh, other error, error, we would have a missed key or anything. Um, but anyway, we're not yet completely finished because this is of course not right. So we wanna change this back now to the actual Airtable key because we really wanna use the information from our environment. And now at this point, we also want to connect our application to Netlify because then we can define our environment. Uh, then we can actually also have this uh, key locally and also we can finally deploy our site. So in order to do this, we're going to head over to GitHub. Yeah, that's me. Let's create a new repository and call this one Angular uh, Launch template, whatever. Uh, we're gonna make this public. I don't want anything of these settings, so just go ahead with create. Now the interesting part comes, um, I do a new CLI. Um, as you can see in my example, locally I always have main already as the default. If you still have master as the default, you're gonna need to run these commands with branch. So what I will run is simply git add dot to add all files. Uh, git commit, I wanna append all files with a message first commit. And I wanna add the remote origin. And finally, I wanna push my main to origin. Once I've done this, I can refresh this page and I should see all my code. Cool. Um, once this is done, we have a GitHub repository. And now we can connect this to Netlify either um, by using uh, add new site and import an existing project, or what you can also do is just run Netlify init, which is pretty cool. And I think for the sake of this tutorial, let's do it. So I wanna create and configure a new site. Uh, I wanna, yeah, I wanna use my team. Um, yeah, I wanna just <laughs> keep that name. Uh, site created your build command. Uh, ng build, I can just run enter the directory pre-launch page. I'm pretty sure the CLI already figures this out from the Netlify toml that we created before because it also got everything right. And then it will just do all of this creating Netlify and we are done. If you know to go back and check your team on uh, Netlify, yeah, this I think this was the name, isn't Simon awesome? Yeah, and the build is still in progress. That's cool, that's cool. 
um, what we want to do now is um, we can wait for this. Did you know that you can actually play a little game here? <laughs> I found this. I don't know who who made this, but this is like next level stuff that I really love. Uh, I don't want to go through this because I, I fail always with my daughter. Um, our application is, no, it's still building, so uh, it should be deployed in a matter of seconds finished, verify run directory, netlify build, and ng build. Oh, it's still doing the ng build, that takes a minute. So we can already add our environment variable. We need to add the Airtable key, and we can do this with a netlify CLI, or we can do it from the uh, UI here. We could just go to functions. No, we could just go to uh, site settings, build and deploy environment. So in here, we could now easily set up this, but that's too easy. We want to do it with the CLI. So we call environment set, and we want to set, uh, of course, not this. Uh, we want to set the Airtable key, and we want to set it to our key, which I had somewhere open. Oh no, where is it? There it is. Okay, I'm gonna run this, and this will set the key to our Netlify environment. We can actually confirm that this is set by going again to this page, and then within environment variables, it will have our Airtable key. And the cool thing is, actually, um, our Netlify dev command, I don't know if I have to rerun it, but I will just do it, um, already has the environment variable as well. So that means I can now really <laughs> use my local pre-launch page and submit something. And this is a pretty realistic example now. So I'm gonna use a pretty realistic email. I hit submit, I submit this, thanks for signing up, and we appear in Airtable. Because now we got the process environment, we got all the keys in place, and we pretty much have the same environment locally that we have within our Netlify uh, application. So this should also be deployed by now. So there we go, here's my pre-launch page. And the cool thing right now is that this will also, or actually I hope uh, it should work, uh, I got way too many windows open, so let's bring up this again. Test at test.com. I'm gonna hit submit. And let's hope that this works in uh, the live environment as well. Oh no, that, ooh, we got an error failed with uh, API key as required. Probably the first deploy didn't take our environment. Um, so most likely if I hit, uh, yeah, deploys, click cache and deploy site, I'm gonna do it like this. Um, if I do it like that, the live page should work as well. <clears throat> but for now, um, let's finish on one, or actually two more things uh, before we wanna completely finish this up. So what we wanna do is <laughs> wanna make this look a bit nicer. And you can do this quite quickly by setting up Tailwind. So I really like Tailwind for my web project. Probably you like Bootstrap more, probably you you just doing a, everything on your own. But if you wanna follow this, just go ahead and install Tailwind. Um, you don't have to follow this part. Uh, it's just that I think it looks pretty great. So then go ahead, run npx tailwind css init. This will create a tailwind configuration file right here. And we're gonna make sure that it includes all of our files. So we're gonna change content to this. Additionally, we need to go to our mm, source style as CSS and import tailwind base components and utilities. And with that in class, uh, in place, oh, that's interesting, nice preview. Uh, with that in place, we can also heat over to our app landing page component uh, HTML one last time. Now, this is gonna be pretty uh, hard for you to uh, read or type um, because it's basically a tailwind snippet. Uh, you can find this in the link code below this video. You're gonna find the tutorial and then you're gonna find the landing component HTML. Just look for it. Um, there should be two snippets, the first with this and the second with this. So once you add this to our page, the page uh, becomes something else. Right now we're not running our Netlify dev. So I don't know how Netlify dev is actually doing the live reload with our Angular CLI. 
how in the world is this doing the live reload? I really, or is it, I, I, maybe it's not even live reload, maybe it's doing a production build all the time and then just serving the new version. That could be the case. So now we have this pretty cool component in here, uh, which is already everything you need basically uh, for your landing page. Um, let me quickly check if our deploy is finished so I can confirm that this maybe now works. Yeah, the problem was really just that we didn't have uh, the environment before this build was created. So now we got this and it works as well. But now we got Tailwind and to make this a real landing page, I would recommend one more thing. That is to go to your index HTML and add some meta tags. Um, the reason is simple. Um, if you share your URL somewhere uh, on Twitter, on Facebook or anywhere, uh, it looks horrible in the preview out of the box. So instead you can do something like this, give it a real name, Angular pre-launch fun. Uh, and then you're gonna add a few OG tags. Now let's do this a bit bigger, give it a bit more space and I'm gonna add these. So for ex can we, let's give it like this first of all. Um, so we got the site name, URL, description, image, secure URL. A lot of platforms are using this, but some for some platforms you can also specify a specific information like for Twitter, for Facebook. Um, I've been using the, uh, the Netlify name in there. So what's my real name? Yeah, it's like this. So I'm gonna replace it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do this. I'm way too lazy to do this. Slash and replace all. Okay, cool. So now we got this. Uh, I mess up the settings of my lines whenever I hit save, but this will help us to have a nice preview because right now if I take this and go to something like metatex.io, I'm gonna add this and you're gonna see it looks really horrible. There's no image, uh, there's no description. It looks like this. Now, if I have it like this instead, we're gonna do uh, git at dot, b oh, I'm, yeah. Uh, I was using a little meta image, so I will just for for fake purposes add a meta image in here for my Ionic Blocks project. Then I go ahead, git at dot, git commit, uh, finish setup, git push. Now, this will push our code, and as we already know, once we've pushed some code to Netlify, it should usually trigger a new build. So there we go, it's building. Uh, let's just wait a second until this is finished. All right, the site should be live. So let's hit refresh and we see our beautiful coming soon page. We got Netlify, we, uh, we got uh, Tailwind <laughs> included now. Let's check our meta text. I'm gonna edit once again and we see the Angular pre-launch phone with a description, title, and a nice preview image. So this is how a pre-launch page should look. Probably also add a good fev icon <laughs> in that case. Now let's do one final test. I'm gonna clear out all this. Somehow it's possible to do this, delete all records. And we're gonna do one last final test for my email. We're gonna please notify me. And there we go, immediately the email is added. Our key is secure, it is secure in Netlify, our page is hosted, it looks quite beautiful, so you can use this as a base for your next project, and I hope you're gonna create a really successful project based on this setup. All right, and that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this Angular example of creating a full landing page, including all the steps it takes from uh, creating the project to hosting it, GitHub, uh, Netlify functions, Tailwind, basically really everything. If you got any questions, just let me know in the comments. And of course, if you would like to see more about Angular web development topics, please just hit the comments and let me know what you would like to see in an upcoming video. If you enjoyed this and also wanna build mobile applications, also of course, check out my Ionic Academy, which is my place to help people learn the Ionic framework. And of course, stay subscribed to this channel for more awesome videos. I will hopefully catch you next time. And until then, happy coding, Simon.